Gold prices are comfortably back above $2,000 an ounce, one week after seeing some of the most intense selling pressure in years. Welcome to Kitco News. I'm Niels Christensen. Joining me today to talk about the price action in the precious metals markets and the recovery we've seen in the last two days is Ole Hansen, Head of Commodity Strategy at Saxo Bank. Ole, welcome back to the show. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much, Niels. Thank you for having me. So I was actually on vacation when we when all of this volatility hit the markets. Um, we're back above two thousand dollars an ounce. Um, let's take me through the price action that you're seeing. I mean, are you surprised that markets have recovered so quickly? Well, we were in the same kind of boat because uh, I left for a vacation just when the market took off. So I missed the uh, the two hundred fifty dollar run up in gold prices and ten dollar run up in silver. So I only returned to, and to to see that correction last week uh, was a co- surprised about correction and not at all because after such a major move, you really need to just to see a period of consolidation and, and correction. Uh, what has surprised me, I would say, at this stage is just the strength of the market because. The correction we saw last week, it didn't even manage the 38.2% of the recent run-up. And now uh, within the, uh, within less than a week, we have retraced more than 618 of that correction. That basically means that the market is once again looking towards the uh, potentially a new high. So then what's driving this price action then? I mean, what, you know, like, is it is it just, is it, it has to be more than just the US dollar uh, falling to a two-year low. It has been a combination of several things, and uh, once again, we we saw the we saw the combination uh, last week when we corrected. Uh, we saw a small correction of the dollar. It strengthened a little bit. We also saw uh, real yields uh, move back uh, back below negative or back above negative one percent. That was really the trigger. Um, and since then, some of these have both uh, eased uh, again. And today, we're seeing uh, the euro dollar trading above uh, one nineteen. If you look at the longer term charts. We are increasingly looking at a breakout of a downtrend in that uh, cross since 2008. So that's uh, obviously one we need to uh, to take have some focus on. But I think just adding to the whole uh, to the whole uh, outlook right now, we have a stock market which is obviously still on fire, understandably so because bonds are re- actually giving you no return whatsoever. And uh, at the same time, we also have a, a geopolitical, I would say, some uncertainty, uh, not only in the US where we have a political, well, we have an election, I've, I believe is going to be uh, pretty nasty uh, and uncertain. And we also have the uh, US-China relationship with the re- latest uh, initiative on Huawei, which we saw yesterday. So so the the my biggest worry right now is actually that there's no nothing to worry about. And that obviously makes me worried. And, uh, and that's why the, I would have liked to see this market just consolidate uh, for, a, for, a, for a period of time here just to allow the market to get used to these new higher levels. Apparently, that's not going to happen, but okay, it's still early days. Um, maybe we, we could consolidate around this 2000 level before potentially moving even higher. And that actually was going to be my next question. I sort of wanted to ask if, you know, if we needed to see a more consolidation period. I mean, uh, I don't. I feel like the the sell off didn't really take froth out of the market, and and we can see, you know, how anxious buyers are to to come back into the market. So I'm sort of, I, I am. I'm sort of wondering if if we do need to sort of pause around two thousand dollars an ounce for you know to see a more sustainable you know uh, uh, step up rally. I think that's. Uh, I think that would be a good, uh, good starting point, uh, basically to build a new base at these higher levels, especially above the old record from 2011. What I think has been interesting um, as well in terms of flows, we just saw a report today um, uh, from one of the major investment banks, their monthly survey, where basically 31% uh, said they or believed that uh, gold for now was uh, was probably into overbought or overstretched. That's the, the highest number, I think, going back at least almost 10 years. So, the, so fund managers are starting to get a little bit worried about these elevated levels Obviously, it remains to be seen whether it's because they would like to see lower prices in order to accumulate, or whether they actually believe that we are we are getting close to a peak here. Fund managers in or speculative uh, accounts in, in in the futures market have cut their longs to uh, to the lowest level in eight weeks. But then, on the other hand, we saw ETF flows last week when the market corrected lower. 
the total drop in holdings in both silver and gold was was uh, just around a half a percent. So really, it's really not uh, not that significant. So. I think at this stage, as I said, I would like to see the market consolidate just to, uh, to just to ensure that everyone catches up with these uh, or catches their breath with these uh, these higher levels. And also, but I think it's not just gold, but silver. I mean, we saw a silver rally nearly six percent on Monday. Um, we're seeing some follow through buying in that market as well. Uh, tell us, what, what are you? What are your thoughts on silver price action? Well, my thoughts are that uh, we've seen some supply disruptions uh, during the pandemic. Uh, the outlook for demand remains strong. Uh, the, we are seeing a potential president, new president in the U.S. really going uh, going green, and uh, that would uh, just encourage and, and increase production for solar panels. Uh, the silver is, is a key component there, so the demand is only looks set to rise. And I think what we have to remember during rallies that the gold is primarily mined as gold, that, that, that comes from uh, gold mining uh, facilities, uh, whereas silver is primarily a byproduct of something like copper and zinc. And that basically means there's not really price, any price uh, or supply reaction if we see a strong rally in the price. It's not as if when gold rallies, potentially miners could try to increase production to benefit from the higher prices. That's You don't have the same uh, mechanism in silver because it's it's not the main product when when mining is is done. So obviously silver, in order to continue to uh, to move higher, it needs the support from gold, but it also needs support from from the industrial metal space and so far we have we've had both of those what i would just add as well is that the the ratio between gold and silver has returned to the 70 dollar mark that's basically more or less in line with the 10 year average so even though you look at silver and say well it's way below the record from 2011 it has actually returned to an average level against gold as we've seen over the past decade so so from here I think if we gold moves higher, silver is likely to move uh, uh, higher even uh, even even faster. But uh, just right now, I'm just looking at this 70 level on the on the ratio between the two. So basically, maybe investors should be paying a little bit more attention to silver than to to gold at, at these levels. And potentially even when we are in the metal space, something like platinum. Uh, platinum's discount to gold is back above a thousand dollars. I think a thousand forty today. It it peaked recently, close to eleven hundred dollars uh, below below gold. Again, if we do see this rally stretch higher, then the the relative value players uh, probably will try to look elsewhere. And right now, the 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 investment, the speculative investment in platinum is is quite low. I think it's one fifth of the the highs we had back in February. And this this uh, discount uh, is could potentially attract some. Some uh, some some additional buyers, especially if we take out the the high of the year, which we have yet to do. Uh, that was made back in 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 January, so uh, I think that's one I will be keeping an eye on as well. Um, last question: I wanted to get your take on the Berkshire Hathaway news. I mean, buying uh, 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 twenty uh, nearly twenty one million shares of uh, Barrick Gold. You know, everybody's saying that this is you know this is a sea change for for the gold market. Um, you know, and, and this enthusiasm uh, and or the, the, the buying is creating enthusiasm for gold. Um, what are your thoughts? I mean, has this has has the Berkshire Hathaway news sort of breathed new life into gold, especially uh, for generalist investors? It's definitely not uh, not a, a bad thing for the market when uh, when one of the world's most famous investors, after decades of uh, shying away from gold, uh, calling it a dead asset, uh, moves back into a gold-related investment. I think there's a couple of reasons for uh, for behind this, um, and and I think the uh, the first first of all is is gold miners uh, do still pay dividends. The outlook looks uh, looks promising, and it and if you are seeing some of the, the stocks that he's uh, selling out. Of at the same time as something like banking stocks, they are they are not expected to provide much dividend in uh, over the coming period. So so it's it's a it's a search for dividend, but I suppose it's also a search for an inflation hedge. And the inflation theme, even though we are not facing any inflationary pressures right now, it is one that is is really on the top of uh, many investors' minds. We're seeing uh, record flows into gold. Uh, no, sorry, inflation protected bonds ETFs. And we're also seeing this uh, this continued demand for gold. We've seen a weaker dollar recently, all potentially pointing towards some inflationary pressures uh, in in the future into 2022. And I think that's part of the the story of this investment. Ole, thank you very much for being my first interview back from vacation. It was a pleasure talking 
Precious Metals with you today. Thank you very much. See you next time. Thank you for watching Kitco News. For the latest in the precious metals markets, go to kitco.com. Stay safe and stay healthy.